Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Home, written by George Saunders. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, this work by George Saunders is very interesting. Um, it says a lot about veterans. It's also very... You know, it it really makes you think. Um, you know, I had to read this story a couple of times because there's so much that that you need to understand and you need to know to really get the picture of what's going on. It's a really interesting um, story. I mean, I guess it kind of has a happy ending, but for most of it, you're like, this is so sad. Um, so basically, what happens in Home by George Saunders is that. Uh, we get this soldier by the name of Mike. He comes home. He he goes to his mother's house. And, you know, he's welcomed. His mother loves him. And things are going well. But what happens is um, he learns that his mother is sick. Uh, his mother's boyfriend tells him that his mother has a lump. And, you know, Mike thinks his mother is dying. And, you know, that... All hope is lost, but truthfully, she's she's fine. It's just that she has a, a bad heart condition. And, um, you know, they eat, and Mike and his mom, they, they try to, you know, catch back up and try to uh, live and, and try to reunite. But the thing is, like, Mike is coming back from war. Uh, we know that he served America in some war. Um... And um, basically, we, we learned that he did something to get court-martialed, and he wasn't, like, just let go or sent home. He was literally, you know, court, he was court-martialed. Um, and he goes back home, and it's, I mean, from what we see in the short story, everybody's afraid of Mike. Um, whatever he did, um, it's something that people are scared of him for. Um, and, you know, in the short story, he's staying with his mom, but then the mom gets kicked out of her home, the home that they all grew up in, his home, because they haven't paid the month, the, the rent in like four months. And the landlord comes in to kick them out. And then Mike is very aggressive. And I mean, I'm pretty sure he has a lot of mental problems. I mean, you could imagine all of the mental problems that uh, veterans um, develop when they're in battle and when they're at war and Mikey Mike comes home with um, I mean we're not really specifically told what problem he has but mentally he's not in the right place and we see him kind of he, he knocks down the landlord and he's very aggressive he, he can be very violent um, and we can see even though that he's not his like Mike is just, he's dangerous, okay, he's, he's dangerous, like, when, when they get kicked out of the house, when Mike and his mother, uh, and her boyfriend gets kicked out of this apartment, this, this house, um, Mike wanted to set the place on fire, um, and he starts doing so to the point where he puts out the fire before it burned, uh, the, the home to the ground, and, you know, they get kicked out. Uh, life's not good because Mike comes home and he's supposed to get this home welcoming, but he doesn't get that. Uh, he goes to see his sister Renee and uh, Renee is scared of him. Renee has a baby and life is going well for Renee. She's married. She's living on the good part of town. And there, you know, Renee, her husband, um... And her husband's parents, they're all afraid of Mike. And um, Renee doesn't even let Mike hold her baby because they're terrified of him. Um, and, and, it, and it bugs me when I was reading this because I'm like, what did this dude, what did he do? Um, and even Renee asked, what did you do? Like, what did you do it? And But the thing is, like, we're not, as the readers, we're not told what he did. So that really bugs me throughout 
reading this and I mean you can let your mind run wild on thinking of what he could have been partially what 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 he could have done to be court martialed but we're not told um Mike goes to see his own kids but he he's not allowed to um his wife gets remarried to a, a man by the name of Evan and Evan doesn't let Mike see his own kids and the wife moves on and it's kind of like Mike went to war for his Ameri for for his country for America he comes back home he finds his mom being thrown on the street he finds his sister living a good life with a husband and everything and he finds another man having sex with his wife i mean it's not that blunt but I mean, you were married, you had a family, but you come back from war and, I mean, yes, you were court-martialed, but you come back from battle and some other man is with your wife, your mom's being thrown in the street and your sister's having a good life and you can't hold your own sister's baby. And you're not really getting this warm welcome that, you know, you're supposed to get. And in America, we we love our veterans and we hold them up because be, without them, where would we be? They protect America. They protect all of us by putting their lives on the line. But a lot of them, when they come back, life doesn't wait for them. Life, you know, girls that they liked or girls that they loved or women, you know, that they were married to, their kids go on with their lives, their wives go on with their lives and their family move on and they come back. And you would think that they would just be re, you know, placed back into the the position that they were when they, you know, went to war, but that position has been filled by other people, and they kind of have to remake their lives because, you know, when you come back from war, you can't just pick up where you left off because the people that were your home, the people that you lived with, now they're gone and they're building their own lives, and you're just this this thing that everybody's saying thank you for your service thank you for putting your life on the line to, to to save us so it's really sad we see mike just wandering around going to different houses you know seeing how amazing some people's lives has got have gotten and seeing how horrible his life has gotten he's very violent he's very i mean there's so much emotions within him. I mean, he's dealing with his own mental problems. I mean, we're not specifically told that he has mental problems, but the way he's acting and what he's seeing, the way that people are treating him, you know, it, it, it pretty much mixes these emotions and these feelings and these thoughts in his mind to the point where I mean, he doesn't know what to do. It's kind of like when he goes to see his kids and Evan says, no, you can't see your kids. There's a line within the short story where he says it's like, you know, people holding you down and somebody comes from behind you and sticks a fist up your up your butt and saying, you know, I don't want to, I don't feel comfortable doing this to you, but I'm doing this to you. I'm paraphrasing, but it, it's like he's given himself up for his country, but he comes back home and he finds everything he hold dear he can't even see his own kids you know this is incredibly sad because what he did was honorable going to war but he gets court-martialed so that's bad so he doesn't come back as a i mean everybody's thanking him for his service but he doesn't really come back as a hero because he got court-martialed and he's really angry and really upset because his life is upside down and the life that he left is not what he found uh, when he came back and um, basically we see him just trying to fit back in but they won't let him fit back in because everybody's afraid of him I want to know what he did I like maybe I missed it I mean I read this short story a couple of times and I get the part where it says he got court-martialed and he did a few bad things, but we're not really given the details. I need some details. We're not really given that the detail of what he did because, like, there's several instances where he's, like, about to hold a baby or hold his sister's baby and it's yanked from him. 
at the last minute because they don't trust him. And they think that he's going to do something bad to the baby. And he himself even thinks that, am I going to do something bad to the baby? You know, if I held the baby, would, would I have done something bad to the baby? So it's like he's like this wolf, this monster. Um, you know, he's removed from war. He's sent back home. And now he's like this monster in the midst of people. And the people, uh, they're thankful for his service, but they don't. They don't want to get close to him because they feel like they're going to get their heads bitten off. Um, and and basically, there's this... Okay, so there's this one scene where he's um, at Renee's house and, and he wants to hold the baby and they don't... Like, Renee's husband doesn't want him to hold the baby and they don't let him hold the baby. And basically, he holds like a, a pitcher... Um, of of lemonade or a drink and he spills it on the like it's like he holds a pitcher like you would a baby and slowly the 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 contents of the pitcher just like of it's just starts to fall on the floor and pour onto the floor and everybody's just watching him holding this pitcher or you know this vase that had a drink in it, this picture that had a drink in it, just pours onto the floor, and everybody just like sits there quietly while the contents of the the thing just pours onto the floor. Then he slams it and says, "You hurt my feelings because you wouldn't let let me hold your baby." And then he storms off. So it's it's a tough read. It's I mean, it makes you feel so twisted because. This man is a man who went to war for his country. He should be a hero, but he's not because he got court-martialed. He did something bad. You don't know what the thing was. His family won't accept him. And his place is gone, and he doesn't know where he, he fits. His mother is getting kicked out of her home. Ah, my goodness. I mean, his mom is his biggest support, supporter because several points she's like, you know, he's a hero, he's a hero. But he's not because he got court-martialed. So he's like a veteran who went to war, but you're thanking him, but he doesn't deserve the thanks because he got court-martialed. Yeah, this short story really messes you up. Um, I mean, the good news is it ends in a in a good place because he had this appointment with Evan, his ex-wife's husband, uh, where he was going to come to the house, to their house, and see his kids. And... Um, Pretty much his mother, his sister, everybody shows up at the appointed time and he was going to let him have it. Like he was going to go in there and do something, but he doesn't do it. And he kind of like says to them or says to us or it just ends in him saying like, you guys sent me, you know, to that hell or I went to that hell. You sent me now bring me back. So it's kind of like. He is in a place where he doesn't know how to get himself out of. He's he's alone. He wants to fit in. He doesn't know how to. He's His emotions are just a mess inside of him. And he's dealing with mental issues. I don't know what he got court-martialed for. So he's probably dealing with whatever that is. And now at the end, he kind of screams out for help. And I mean, I guess that helps us to... To feel a little bit better by the time you're done reading this short story. So maybe, maybe, because he says like, you know, when he sees his mom being helped out um, to get up because his mom is very weak, he he feels something soften within him. And then he kind of asks for help, like, you send me away now, bring me back. That That's, I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he says at the end. And that gives you hope that maybe he can build his life back. And maybe he can come back so far to the point where maybe they'll let him see his own kids again and maybe they'll feel safe around him again. Um, yeah. I mean, we know he did something really bad in the army, but maybe it's not too bad because when when you go to trial in regards to the U.S. Army, um, in, in regards to, to the military courtroom, the military... If it's bad enough, they will, you know, you will face 
the ultimate punishment, you know, you will die. Um, if whatever you did is bad enough, you know, they, uh, they will, you know, capital punishment, they will kill you for, you know, if your, if your crime fits the bill, they will kill you. And well, I mean, yeah, because th that's the punishment and they didn't, the military didn't kill him for whatever he did. So maybe, so maybe it's not too bad. Um, cause they sent him home. So he's free and he's in public with people so whatever he did maybe it's something he can redeem himself from and, and climb out of his darkness yeah okay so in terms of analysis in terms of deeper meaning um i mean this says a lot about veterans um number one thing i get from this short story about veterans is that you know, America loves its veterans. We love our veterans. You know, it's because of them, you know, we can be comfortable and, and you know, get fat off of America and all of the things it offers. Uh, but at the same time, when they go to war and come back, I mean, we'll, fo we'll, we'll throw parades for them, but their original lives are gone. Um, you know, the people that they, you know, they were involved with, involved with romantically uh jobs that they had um their kids you know and they're probably their innocence and identity um are also gone because when you go to war and you come back you don't come back the same person um there's this little scene where or this part of the the short story where he says like somebody hired him in high school to clean this pond and while he was like raking the muck out of this this pond he he was killing a bunch of tadpoles and since he was hired to do it he, he he couldn't stop he would just had to kill keep shoveling or raking muck out of this pond and by raking the muck and you know throwing it away or getting rid of it and piling it up the more he was doing it, the more he was killing tadpoles. And he says, like, that's what war was like to him because he was sent to war to kill and he was killing and piling up the bodies. So I, I, I honestly think from my own personal perspective, human beings were not meant to kill each other because if we were, um, I don't think people would have P PTSD. Um or all the psychological problems people develop from war. I think it it does something to our souls. I mean, we have to do it. We have to defend ourselves against our enemies. But to the people that go to war and actually come back, um, the war really never ends for them in their minds because whatever atrocities they saw, whatever nasty things they saw, those images will always stay with them forever. And there's nothing we can do to get rid of that, and I'm and I mean that's one of the re the one of the great reasons why we ha always have to thank our veterans because they have to live with the war forever, uh, because their memories, their, their memories are their memories. You, you can't escape from your own memories and from your own trauma and the things that you you went through. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, that's the short story. That's like what happens within it. Um, for the, the veteran, for the soldier that comes home, life is forever changed because your identity is different. Who you are, who you will be is different. Um, no one holds a place for you back at home in the United States. People move on. And although America thinks it's veterans and love it, it's veterans, um, we can say thank you to them, but, you know, there's some things that they gave up to go to war that they can never get back. And, and that's incredibly sad because no matter how Mike makes, comes back, he'll never be back to what he originally was. Yeah. Um, all right, that's my summary analysis of, of this work by uh, George Saunders. And George Saunders always, man, oh, he always messes my head up. 
Jesus Christ. Um, all right, I'll see you guys in the next video.